Hey guys, Luna here. Welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod showcase video for consoles, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. A lot of you guys have been mentioning the fact that not all these mods might be on PlayStation 4, but until we find that otherwise, I will just assume that they are. Today, we've got another top 5 rated mods for me to showcase, and I just go over any mods that are in the most popular today, or the highest rated, or under most favorited, and latest or any other mod I just come across that I really like. So we kind of go over things from those kind of four or five places. Today, our first mod is going to be this one right here, which is Spawn Items for Xbox One, probably one of the most downloaded mods on the console so far. So we're not going to waste any time. Let's get straight in to the first one because it's going to be quite a long video. The Spawn Items for Xbox One by Edgard Aguilar. It says, spawn all kinds of items, weapons, ammunition, armor, Power armor, all consumables, all crafting materials, supplies, NPCs, enemies, targeting HUD, all resistance, special, perks, magazines, and more and more. It's compatible with all the DLCs, it does not require installation of any of the DLCs to work. And to get the spawn item in game, you can create a hollow tape, usually under the utility in the chem lab, although I think I just had it straight in my inventory. So let's go in game and see what there is. Alright, so when you head into game, you go to your miscellaneous in your inventory and you can see that there's a hull tip there that says spawn items and more. So we can just click on that. It's just pretty similar to the cheat menu. And you can see here we have a big list of things to look through. Okay, so we have spawn NPC, spawn synth container, spawn power armor, spawn in inventory, spawn workshop workbench, player settings, game settings, and cheat wears line or whatever that means, and info. So we can just check the first one, spawn NPC. Okay you get a choice of NPCs that you want to spawn. So you get Settler, Minutemen, Security, Where's Line, Diana, Deathclaw, Super Mutant, Assaultron, Mirelurk, Gorilla, Sentry Bot, Mini Prime, and that's all that I'm gonna spawn this Gorilla. Okay, and we will see what happens when we leave the spawn menu. So you can see here we have just a random Gorilla. So it just spawns exactly where you are. Back in the menu, we have spawn synth container okay and you can have one with weapons and ammo armor magazines miscellaneous or legendary and when you spawn them you can see here it spawns a synth and you can open their inventory and they have all of the items on them which you can then take so if we head back into the holotype again you get spawn power armor you can get any of the power armors including ones that belong to other people you get spawn into inventory. You can add 100,000 caps, 100 bobby pins, all ammo, you get 500 of each, all weapons, all armor, all consumables, mods, components, and all crafting materials. Spawn workshop workbench. You can spawn a workshop, chem station, armor workbench, power armor station, weapons workbench, and a cooking station. Under player settings, so that's all the things that you can spawn. Under player settings, you get player state, and you can change all of these things here. Resistance, your specials, health, AP, carry weight, and you can make custom ones for each of those. Your player behavior. So you can get auto ammo, you can get auto health, you can change your run speed, your jump height, whether you have a jetpack or not, how much your fusion core will drain, and your invisibility. It says here that there's a game bug for that one, so there's a warning, and no fall damage. For player sensors, you can sense different people, so allies, enemies, dead, synth, recon, and also gives you the distance for the sensors. You can add 1 or 10 levels, let's add 10 levels. You can apply all perks, you can apply all follower perks, and then you have the option to reset perks, but I don't think it will reset your level, so keep that in mind. Under that we have game settings, you can change the time. So you get to increase and decrease. I think it might just increase or decrease it by one hour. You get to change the scale. I have absolutely no idea what that is, so don't ask. You could change the weather. You get to change all the different weathers. Although it doesn't apply, it's just vanilla weathers. It doesn't apply if you have any mods installed. And you can show all map markers. Finally, you get cheat where's line and you get a whole list of different things that you can apply. So you get the La Muerta, which is a weapon, you get a rifle, and you also get the Fat Man version. You get cryogenic explosives, you get grenade liberty prime, grenade sentry bot, 
Grenade Assault Tron, Grenade Power Armor T45, and you get Grenade Enemy or Grenade Battle, and you can turn that off or on. Let's um, turn on these Grenade Liberty Primes, okay? And then what I think that does, if you go to your inventory and go along to Weapons, you will now have five Grenade Liberty Primes, and you can throw them. Uh, okay. You can throw them, and you will spawn a Liberty Prime. So that's really cool. So that is it for this mod, guys. It's really, really cool, and it's definitely one of the most useful mods in the game. It pretty much has everything that you could need, and it's one of the most popular, and I think it's the most downloaded mod in the game as well. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's move on to the next mod. The next mod, guys, is a really, really strange mod, and it's called Ultra Rangers Xbox version. It does require you to have the Far Harbor DLC in order to get it. It adds in Ultra Armor and Ultra Outfits in white, blue, yellow, and red. It adds in the same colors for swords. It adds in the Ultra Yellow, Ultra Blue, Ultra Red, and Ultra White enemy. And they spawn at the Ultra location, which is marked on your map, as you've seen at the start. The Ultra Rangers will spawn randomly in the world. They are hard and dangerous. They will have the chance to drop their items, swords, and outfits, or you can get them from the Ultra location. The purpose of this mod is to have some Japanese over-the-top latex costume action fun. <laughs> so that is the purpose of the mod. It's very, very strange. As you can see here, guys, they kind of look like Power Rangers slash Jedis, but on acid. I can't really describe it any other way, and there's no point to this mod other than it being weird. And once you destroy or kill the enemies, and you can find the armor, and then you can equip it yourself, and you can equip the weapons, and then you can go out into the wasteland or the commonwealth and you can be your own kind of weird superhero power ultra ranger and have fun killing enemies with your sword. So yeah, there's not much more I could say about this mod. The author, Lagree, was definitely on something when he designed this. But anyway, let's get on to the next mod. So our next mod is a really cool one, it's called Rockin' Red Rocket and it turns the Red Rocket garage in your sanctuary into an interior cell, meaning it's behind a load door and it completely transforms the interior. It's really, really cool looking now. Before you install this mod, there's some warnings. Back up your save, empty everything inside of the Red Rocket garage settlement. The exterior is fine, just the inside station will be inaccessible if the mod is installed with things inside. Um, I found when I done it, I didn't completely clear away some of the enemies and none of this stuff had loaded on the inside. It was completely empty. I could go on, but it was empty on the inside. So make sure that you clear everything out, either scrap it, store it, or if you can't pick up things like bodies, then get a tire and pick that up and drag things out of the garage. So just make sure that the inside is completely empty. So you should only have posters on the wall and the workshop bench. We also have some general information here. While decoration is static, workstations and containers still work and are safe to use. So you can't interact with any of the furniture, but you can still use workbenches and the things as containers. The workbenches are linked to the Red Rocket workbench, so they share resources with the outside. And you can still use the outside of your garage as normal and build and invite settlers to it. The power armor workbench inside is mainly for leaving your armor at the door when you come in. It cannot be used for crafting as the animation is blocked by a wall. And underneath that, there's a whole bunch of links. So this is a really, really cool mod. The interior has completely transformed. You can't interact with it, but it's still, I don't think it needs anything changed inside because it's very, very nice. And I'd happily live here in the game. And I'd quite like to see some of this um, furniture and stuff in the build menu where I could add it into different builds. So that'd be cool. Anyway guys, this was a nice mod and we will go on to the next one. Okay, so the next mod is called the Ashara Fallout 4 Under Armors and it's obviously by Ashara. This mod adds four female new under armors for Fallout 4. They can be worn under any piece of armor in the game. To obtain the under armors, craft them in the chemistry lab under the utility category like most mods. Once created, you can recolor each piece of the under armor in six different colors. Brown, which is default, black, white, blue, burgundy, and green. 
at any of the normal armor workbenches. Each piece can be recolored independently, so you can wear a white top with black trousers or any other combination. They also allow the ballistic weave mod and the lining mods of both the vault suit and the vault armors. All of the arm under armors rather have these statistics. The way one, they're worth 50 caps. They give 10 damage resistance, 10 energy resistance, 10 radiation resistance, and 10 physical resistance. They also have enchantments. The halter tops and trouser statistics in all colors will give you an enchantment of plus two strength and plus two agility. The halter top and skirt statistics in all colors will give you an enchantment of plus two charisma and plus two endurance. The vest, shirt and trouser statistics in any color will give you an agility plus two and endurance plus two. And the vest, shirt and skirt statistics in all colors will give you a charisma plus two and a luck plus two. So that is it for this mod. You can choose one of the four armors and you can customize it with different colors and stuff in the armor workbench. But let's move on to the final mod. All right, so our fifth and final mod here is the Modern Firearms Tactical Edition for Xbox One by Idle Sheep. And it says in the description here, Modern Firearms adds multiple weapon system platforms and a vast array of ways to customize them. And so basically it will add in loads and loads of brand new guns and you can modify each of them. Around level 15, guns from the AR and AK families will start to show up at vendors. Additional weapons will continue to become available as you level up. At the same time, weapons will start to show up on NPCs. And if you don't have the caps to buy them, it says pry them from their cold dead hands. In terms of modifying guns, you can build a crafting workbench that will sell ammo and parts for these guns using pre-war money, or you could scrap the guns for parts to upgrade other guns. Or if you have the caps, you can actually buy pre-modified guns in the actual game from the vendors, as you can see in the game right now. There are loads and loads of different versions of each gun because they've been modified in different ways. So you can just buy the gun pre-modded the way you want it to be. Well guys, that's all there is to say about this mod. Let's get straight into the firing range in the cheat room and I'm gonna show you guys all of the brand new weapons. I've just chose one of each kind of weapon and I just chose kind of the best mod for each one because they all are pre-modded when you buy them. But I'm not gonna talk through all this, I'm just gonna show the weapon and show me firing it in first and third person. If you enjoyed this video guys, as always, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and I will see you all next time for more Fallout 4 mod showcase videos. See you then guys. Hee 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 hee!